Welcome to this video where we're going to explore 30 confirmed features of GTA 6 that Rockstar Games has officially talked about. But first, a quick heads up. The info we're sharing comes from a security breach and leak of GTA 6 pre-alpha footage. Rockstar Games acknowledged this leak on their official Twitter. Just to be clear, we won't be showing any gameplay footage due to possible copyright issues, but we'll definitely dive into these cool features. Feature 1. Looks aren't just for show. The reactions of non-playable characters, NPCs in GTA 6, are pretty fascinating. How clean your character is and their overall appearance affect how these in-game characters respond to you. It adds a cool layer to the game, considering how NPCs react differently based on your character's appearance. Feature 2. Let's rev up the excitement with some serious vehicle action. Imagine cruising through the Everglades in a top-notch hovercraft. That's just one of the personal rides available right from the start. And there's more, like taking the wheel of a bold 1970 Ford Ranchero GT in striking red and black, owned by a character named Jason. Feature 3. Here's another level of immersion. Each character has their own stuff. So, when you're playing as Jason, you can tap into Lucia's stash and vice versa. Say Jason's low on assault rifle bullets. If you're close to Lucia, you can ask her for some. It opens up a bunch of possibilities for teamwork and sharing resources in the game. Feature 4. For all you die-hard GTA fans, there's a new clothing store in town called Arches. It's got a fresh collection to amp up your character style. Feature 5. Let's talk graphics. In GTA 6, the clothes are seriously detailed. Wrinkles, dirt marks, and even sweat. Paying so much attention to clothing details makes the characters look super real, adding a ton of authenticity and making the game more immersive. Feature 6. While exploring the vast game world of GTA 6, you'll see a seamless mix of modern vehicles in urban areas and older ones in rural spots like the Everglades. It gives that cool GTA vibe, whether you're cruising in a flashy city car or taking a nostalgic drive in the countryside. GTA 6 has a bunch of wheels to fit whatever mood you're in. Feature 7. During certain heists, there's a timer showing when the cops will show up. Some think it's a developer thing, but it could mean players need to plan their heists well, syncing with the police response for a perfect score. That'd definitely add an exciting twist. Feature 8. I'm buzzing about this one. GTA 6 will feature a massive aquarium. Yes, you heard that right. Players get to explore an aquarium within the game, adding a cool new element to the gameplay. Feature 9. There's a limit on inventory space. Players can't stockpile an endless number of items. A smart move would involve rummaging through crates and storage spots at the docks, to earn cash and gather valuable stuff, spicing up the gameplay. Feature 10. Here's something cool. In GTA 6, you're not stuck with your character's right side view like in GTA 5. Following Red Dead Redemption's lead, players can freely switch their character's preferred shoulder for a better view. It also changes which hand your character uses for weapons, making gameplay more immersive. Feature 11. GTA 6 adds a touch of reality with a dynamic day-night cycle. Shops don't stay open 24 7 anymore. Some close at night and reopen during the day, making the whole experience more immersive. Immersive. At night, the city changes vibe, less traffic, and a different feel altogether. Feature 12. Adding to the mix are special abilities, somewhat like what we saw in Red Dead Redemption 2. From leaked gameplay, it looks like Jason has a unique skill. He can spot valuable stuff in the surroundings. They light up like hidden treasures, adding a whole new twist to the game. Feature 13. Let's dive into some of the confirmed stuff in GTA 6. It's quite a mix. There are spear guns, bolt-action sniper rifles, and a bunch of golf clubs, wedges, irons, drivers. Also, Players can use a crowbar to open containers and grab valuable stuff. There's more. Smoke grenades, flashbangs, golf balls, and tracker jammers to dodge the cops. Snatching fancy cars might need special tools like the immobilizer bypass. Loads of choices to make gameplay super immersive and fun. Feature 14. Moving on to the awesome in-game places we've seen. There's a bunch. Tennis courts, a huge stadium, and even a museum. All with interactive insides. It's bringing back the exploration vibe we loved in GTA 4, and that's got us hyped for GTA 6. Feature 15. In in a cool scene during a diner robbery, a non-playable character, NPC, was visibly relieved when the cops showed up, saying, Finally, thank heavens. This shows how smart the AI is in GTA 6, and it's a sign of Rockstar's attention to detail. Feature 16. Get ready for a huge and diverse map to roam around. GTA 6 covers the whole shebang of Vice City and its surroundings, offering tons to explore. You've got the bustling city, scenic beachfronts, Everglades-like grass rivers, the charm of Florida Keys, and the quaint Port Gellhorn. Port Gellhorn even gets its own police department, showing different areas with their own rules, kind of like what we saw in Red Dead Redemption 2. So, where's your first stop in GTA 6? Drop your thoughts in the comments. Feature 17. Time for a tour of in 
interiors in GTA 6. There's a bunch of places waiting to be discovered. One cool spot making a comeback is Escobar International Airport, giving us those Vice City vibes. Exploring the airport could unlock a load of side missions, opening up endless possibilities for adventures. Feature 18, tourism's a big deal in GTA 6, making the game world feel alive. You'll stumble upon a clever take on a famous theme park, kinda like Disney World. It's a thrilling spot to dive into, and get this, there's even the International Space Station. Rockstar's really going all out to make GTA 6 an awesome experience. Feature 19. The characters you'll meet in GTA 6 have had some major upgrades. They come in all shapes and sizes, some towering and impressive, others more on the average or smaller side. This variety really brings the in-game city to life, making it feel more realistic. Rockstar's definitely set a high standard in gaming with this, and I can't wait to dive into this amazing world they've created. Feature 20 new gameplay features are here, and one that stands out is using assault rifles while inside a vehicle. It's going to shake up how players handle combat. Feature 21 money in GTA 6 works differently. You don't just magically get more cash in your bank account after robbing a store. Instead, you physically grab the cash from the store counter using a button. It makes the whole experience more real and interactive. Feature 22. Now this is wild. The vehicle customization options in GTA 6 are something else. When you get into a vehicle, hit the left D-pad for the vehicle options menu. You can tweak the seat, fix the steering wheel, and even jazz up the interior. There's talk that this might be limited to developers, but I'm hoping it's for everyone in the final game. Feature 23. There's a ton more to do in GTA 6. The game amps up interaction by letting you handle money, USB drives, weapons, food, and different clothes, giving you more control over the world. Feature 24 hats off to hat customization. In GTA 6, you can style your hat in different ways showing off your fashion taste. It might seem small, but it makes your character really stand out. Feature 25. Here's a neat twist. When you're on the run and hijack a ride, your criminal description changes a bit, leaving out specific car details. This tricks witnesses and stops them from telling the cops about your getaway car. Smart move to stay hidden and adds a tactical side to the game. Feature 26. The big news? GTA 6 is officially scheduled to hit stores. Feature 27. Something fun and quirky. You can actually interact with gumball machines in the game and snag some gumballs. It's a small thing, but it adds a nice touch of reality to the game. Feature 28. Talking about the cops and what's happening in the game world. During gameplay, I saw the police doing traffic stops, DUI tests, and even searching vehicles. Also, the in-game map shows random NPC AI car accidents, and the cops rush in to handle these, making the virtual world feel genuinely chaotic. Feature 29. Time to talk weapons. GTA 6 brings a massive range of guns, from pistols to heavy artillery. With so many options, the action stays intense, making sure your arm armed for any situation. Feature 30 GTA 6 is bringing in an inventory system, like what we saw in Red Dead Redemption 2. Looks like Lucia's got a sports bag hinting at that. Bonus features. Feature 31. Let's take a darker turn, handling bodies in the game. It adds a creepy level of realism. Players can deal with and move bodies, adding a whole different vibe to GTA 6. It'll be interesting to see how this affects the gameplay. Feature 32. NPCs in GTA 6 are shaping up to be super interesting. Rockstar's bringing in the immersive vibes we loved in Red Dead Redemption 2, and the potential potential here is huge. The improvements they've made could take the game to a whole new level. I'm super hyped to see what Rockstar's got up their sleeve. Feature 33 GTA 6 starts off with a bang, small time heists, and the chance to rob small businesses, giving you a thrilling start. Feature 34. You'll get your hands on a bunch of tools to up your crime game in GTA 6. Lockpicks, hacking gadgets, and more are there to help you handle whatever challenges come your way. Having the right tools in your pocket makes the gameplay more lively and exciting. There's been quite a buzz about Jason, one of the main leads in the highly anticipated Grand Theft Auto 6. People are spinning theories left, right, and center, suggesting he might be an undercover cop, an agent, an ex-cop, or even someone with a military background. It's been the talk of the town ever since the first official trailer dropped. Now, I've got to warn you, what we're about to discuss might just spoil a bit of the GTA 6 storyline for you. But hey, if you've been keeping tabs on the GTA 6 grapevine, chances are you've already heard murmurs about these theories. Now, I gotta stress, folks, that as exciting as these speculations are, they're just that. Speculations. Nothing set in stone. But here's the deal. There are some interesting things in Jason's outfit, from certain glimpses in the trailers, and Rockstar's promotional stuff, that sort of fuel these speculations. They're like breadcrumbs teasing us about Jason's potential undercover identity. So today, I'm here to unravel these clues and take you through the evidence we've got so far. We'll start with the very first trailer of Grand Theft Auto 6. You know, the one that set the internet on fire? We'll dissect it bit by bit and get into the nitty gritty of this theory that's got the GTA 6 community all hyped up. And it's not just about the trailers, folks. Oh no, there's a whole treasure trove of articles out there 
discussing findings made by fans, diving into details, and connecting dots. We're gonna sift through all that too. And hey, while we're at it, let's not forget about the actors. There's been some chatter about who might be stepping into the shoes of Jason in this game, so we'll toss that into the mix as well. There's plenty to unravel, and we're here to explore every nook and cranny of this speculation, piece by piece. So grab your favorite snack, get comfy, because we're about to embark on a journey through the GTA 6 speculations, theories, and rumors about Jason. Let's start off by jumping into this interesting Reddit post. I've seen some speculation that Jason is an undercover cop makes sense since we see first-person gameplay of a police raid. I'm guessing he falls in love with Lucia, and his storm between his duty and his love could be not true, but it seems like it would be a good twist in something Rockstar would do. Okay, let's take a deeper dive into this scene where we encounter these four police officers. They're pretty unmistakably cops with that distinct police badge on their body armor. It's crucial to note the small details here, especially regarding their attire, as it might hold some key information. Now, among this squad of officers, there's one guy who stands out from the rest. He's chilling on the far right, sporting a casual white tank top, while the others are all suited up in body armor, their caps turned backward. This difference suggests a hierarchy within the group, making us wonder if this dude's perhaps a higher up or holds a different position within the force. The intriguing part, though, is the context of this scene. It feels like a pivotal moment, almost as if these officers are significant characters in the narrative. But let's pump the brakes a bit. It's all speculation at this point. We can't be certain of their importance or their roles in the storyline just yet. Now, let's loop this back to Jason, the main focus of our attention. There's a striking connection here, the cop on the far right and the one in the middle, both sporting these distinct olive green cargo pants. These pants seem to be a part of their uniform, something that catches the eye. But here's the twist. The same style of cargo pants is seen on Jason in the official Grand Theft Auto 6 artwork released by Rockstar. Coincidence? Maybe, but it feels like too much of a match to ignore. What's up with these pants? Is it a fashion trend among the police force in the GTA 6 universe? Or could it be hinting at a deeper connection between these officers and our protagonist Jason? The plot thickens, and we're left to ponder the significance of these subtle visual cues. Is there a backstory linking these officers to Jason? Or is it merely a design choice by the creators to establish a visual pattern? We're left with questions, my friends. Questions that make us itch to uncover more about this intriguing storyline. So, buckle up as we continue this investigation, piecing together clues and theories, aiming to decipher the enigmatic links between these officers and our mysterious main character, Jason. There's a whole world of possibilities waiting to be explored within the realm of Grand Theft Auto 6. Let's dive into this article by Exputer that further supports this rumor. GTA 6 fans have been busy digging into the lore of both protagonists since the trailer dropped. It appears that users may already have found notable details about Jason. A slew of forums and posts have popped up with speculations with evidence that complies with prior findings. A post by the Redditor, Jack underscore Torrance 80 on the GTA 6 subreddit solidifies the past rumors that clarified that Jason would start the game as a cop. The pants worn by the protagonist in the GTA 6 poster are a part of the official uniform of Miami-Dade Police. The green cargo pants are the same color used by the Miami-Dade Police SWAT team. Additionally, the inclusion of body cam footage in the trailer may also imply his past background as a cop. It is speculated that he was dismissed from the service during the events of the game, having to continue his life as a petty thief. In the side-by-side -side comparison, you'll notice something intriguing. Those pants on the right in the image are an exact match to the ones worn by those police officers in the trailer clip. The detailing with those black bands and the gun holsters, it's all there. But here's where it gets interesting. Jason, in the official artwork, doesn't seem to have any of those gun holsters. It's as if he decided to part ways with that gear when he left the police force, holding onto only those distinctive pants. Now, about that white tank top he's sporting in the artwork, it bears a striking resemblance to the one worn by the cop, positioned on the far right in that clip. It's these little connections that make you wonder if there's more to it than meets the eye. Could it be a deliberate choice by the creators to hint at Jason's past, subtly linking him to the law enforcement world? Or is it just a coincidence? In the comments of the Reddit post, a user says, he is probably a dismissed cop or soldier, got too desperate and started to do petty crimes. Lucia brings him the local connections and scores, and he uses his former police training skills in weaponry and vehicles, a dismissed corrupt cop or soldier, a freshly out of jail ex-prisoner. 
Victor Vance and Tommy Versetti. And there could be more parallels between these two pairs of characters if you think about it. Vic was being betrayed again and again in his storyline. When he finally decided to quit, his brother pushed him to enter another deal with Tommy, which eventually killed him. Tommy, on the other hand, is a more cunning and ambitious person. He promised Rosenberg to leave him a piece of his Vice City Empire, but later abandoned him and left him exiled in Las Venturas. These observations really bring up some compelling comparisons, especially when looking at Tommy Vercetti and Victor Vance from previous GTA installments. There's a chance we might see echoes of similar themes or storylines reflected in GTA 6, which lines up nicely with what Rockstar teased in the trailer. Let's zero in on Jason's haircut. It's clean cut and short, a style often associated with law enforcement or military personnel. That detail might not be just a coincidence. It could be a deliberate choice by the creators to hint at Jason's past as an ex-cop or someone with a military background. It adds an extra layer of depth to his character, don't you think? I'm genuinely interested in hearing your take on this theory. There is a lot of evidence supporting this theory, and it might be a major deal as we might be working with the police possibly in GTA 6. That would be a completely new gameplay element in the GTA series, so we have a lot to look forward to. Tell me what are your thoughts and opinions about Jason's potential background, whether he's linked to law enforcement or not, as it could shed more light on this intriguing speculation. From 2022 and onward, a group of passionate GTA fans have been diving deep into GTA 6 gameplay leaks, and what they discovered was wild. Their mission? They're trying to map out the entire landscape of GTA 6 before Rockstar Games even releases the official game. And guess what? They're actually making some serious headway. This is all about the ongoing GTA 6 mapping project. So how did this whole endeavor start anyway? It's an interesting story that not many folks are aware of. You see, there was a similar craze back when GTA 5 was announced. Back in 2011, a group of dedicated fans took it upon themselves to predict and sketch out the layout of GTA 5's terrain. How did they do this? By meticulously analyzing every single trailer that Rockstar Games dropped in the year leading up to the game's eventual release in 2013. The surprising part? When the game finally hit the shelves, a substantial chunk of what these fans had mapped out turned out to be surprisingly accurate. Sure, there were a few locations that were a bit inaccurate, like the military base being off and the dam placed in the wrong spot. Also, there were some variations in the overall shape of San Andreas, but considering they solely relied on Rockstar's official footage and had put in two years of work, their accuracy was pretty commendable. Now imagine this, if they could pull off that level of detail with just the trailers, think about what these enthusiasts could achieve with the leaked, under the radar stuff that slipped out prematurely. Plus, add in an extra year of combing through details and data. This mapping project is being led by a user called Dupzor, who is the project manager of this whole thing. On September 18th, 2022, when a massive leak dropped over 90 minutes of GTA 6 footage, the map enthusiasts went into full gear. While I can't exactly showcase the leaked content here, what really sparked the interest of the community were the coordinates embedded within the developer's HUD. These sneaky numbers revealed the exact whereabouts of the player concerning the game map. And let me tell you, GTA 6 fans wasted no time diving into this goldmine of information. With these coordinates in hand, the community went Sherlock Holmes mode, meticulously mapping out the game's terrain and identifying key locations. For instance, in one intriguing clip from the leaks, Lucia and Jason were caught in the act, robbing what seemed to be a Waffle House. This incident was marked by a simple white dot on their evolving map project. But it wasn't just a random dot, it was a significant clue. By cross-referencing the coordinates provided in this clip with other glimpses from the leaked footage, they managed to calculate the spatial relationships between different spots showcased in the leaks. This detective work allowed them to gauge distances and plot out the relative positioning of these places within the game world. However, it didn't stop there. The community didn't solely rely on leaked footage. They combined their detective skills with the official trailer and using a blend of educated guesses and hard data, endeavored to include every conceivable road, building, and landmark featured in the GTA 6 map. The goal? To create a comprehensive and accurate representation of the game's virtual world based on all available tidbits of information. It's a fascinating process that demonstrates the dedication and passion of gaming communities in piecing together the puzzle of what to expect in GTA 6. Since the leaks hit, the GTA community has been on a mission, working tirelessly to piece together the game's map. Their focus has mainly been on sketching out the main areas, the cities, towns, and key landmarks. It's been quite a collective effort, with everyone trying to contribute and fill in the blanks based on whatever clues they could find. 
Then the trailer dropped, and it was a whole new ball game. Among all the fast cars and flashy scenes, Rockstar slipped in a subtle surprise for the observant fans. After a few days of dissecting the trailer frame by frame, someone spotted it. A tiny image hidden in the bottom right corner of the ending screen. And guess what? It looked like a map snippet. Naturally, the community went into full detective mode. They put on their magnifying glasses and compared this mysterious map with the one they'd been building from the leaks. There were some similarities, especially with the layout of the right side and the presence of separate islands at the bottom, surrounded by water. But here's the catch. That image was pixelated to the max. It was like trying to figure out a puzzle with half the pieces missing. The lack of detail made it nearly impossible to confirm if it matched their map. This whole revelation sparked a heated debate among fans. Some folks started wondering if Rockstar deliberately threw this low-res map nugget to mess with their heads. Could it be that Rockstar is messing with the community, leading the GTA 6 mapping project into the wrong path? It's pretty odd for Rockstar to include this map as it was deliberately placed. When it comes to safeguarding the details of their upcoming games, Rockstar is notoriously tight-lipped. So when those leaks dropped in 2022, it really threw a spanner in the works for the company. It's kind of a deja vu situation, considering a similar thing happened back when GTA 5 was in the spotlight. I can't help but wonder if Rockstar did this deliberately, you know, as a deliberate move to shake things up and keep everyone guessing. But then again, we, the GTA fans, are pretty good at concocting theories out of thin air. Now about that mysterious, highly detailed artwork nestled in the official wallpaper, that's what's really piqued my interest. It's like this odd piece that stands out from the rest, making me think it wasn't just randomly thrown in there. There's gotta be some intention behind it, right? The big question swirling around is whether it's a sly misdirection or a subtle clue for the savvy gamers. But honestly, we won't get any answers until the game hits the shelves, or maybe, if we're lucky, after another sneak peek in a new trailer. The GTA 6 mapping community dove headfirst into dissecting this artwork, but truth be told, there wasn't much to work with. So, they've been sticking to the stuff they can actually confirm. Oh, and those maps floating around, especially the ones from IGN and PC Gamer? They're more like creative interpretations. Think of them as speculative mock-ups cooked up by the mapping community based on their hunches and educated guesses. There's a whole lot of imagination at play there, but none of it has received the official stamp of confirmation. The GTA 6 mapping project might not be dropping any bombshells about unknown locations in the game, especially considering how the gameplay leaks already spilled quite a bit on what's in store. Now the heart of this community effort lies in the finer details. They're all about pinning down the exact spots where these landmarks and locations are going to be placed within the game's vast world. However, let's be real here. They've barely scratched the surface, covering roughly just 10% of the entire map. Still, kudos to them for the tremendous effort and progress they've managed to make with what they have. What's confirmed, though, is that this map in GTA 6 is going to be an absolute beast, nearly double the size of the already sprawling map in GTA 5. They've made strides, particularly in fleshing out the Miami Beach region seen in the trailer, those gorgeous Venetian islands from the breathtaking aerial shot, and even narrowing down the location of Lucia's incarceration in the game. Looking ahead, this ongoing commitment over the coming years will gradually unveil more insights into what we can anticipate from the GTA 6 map. The anticipation is real, and it's fascinating to witness how this mapping endeavor will continue to shape our expectations for GTA 6. Today, we're delving into the realm of GTA 6 Online, the upcoming multiplayer aspect of Rockstar Games' Grand Theft Auto 6. We'll dissect all the insights gathered from leaks back in 2022, alongside an intriguing anti-cheat patent filed by Rockstar's parent company, Take-Two Interactive. This patent offers a glimpse into how the forthcoming online experience aims to ensure a safer environment compared to the current GTA Online. Furthermore, we'll explore a novel method Rockstar plans to implement in GTA 6 for managing online sessions. This innovation promises to infuse the expansive world of GTA 6 with a livelier atmosphere, enriching the player's immersion in its intricacies. Undoubtedly, GTA Online stands as a titan in the realm of multiplayer gaming. Its enduring popularity has significantly contributed to the ongoing success of GTA 5 over the past 11 years. This success owes much to Rockstar's astute strategy, crafting a robust core game with GTA 5 and then supplementing it with regular content updates for the online segment. By continually introducing new weapons, vehicles and attire, Rockstar keeps players engaged and motivated to accumulate in-game currency. As we eagerly anticipate the official unveiling of GTA 6, players are hopeful that it will address prevalent issues plaguing the current iteration. 
Chief among these concerns is the rampant presence of modders and cheaters, whose actions not only disrupt gameplay, but also pose security risks by unlawfully accessing personal data. To tackle this issue, Rockstar has devised a fresh approach set to debut in GTA 6. This method aims to bolster the game's security measures. The patent responsible for this enhancement is titled Method and Apparatus for Preventing Cheating in a Video Game Environment by Providing Obfuscated Game Variables. Filed by Take-Two Interactive, Rockstar's parent company, in 2019, this patent outlines a system and method aimed at curbing cheating within video game environments. By disguising game variables in memory, the patent seeks to thwart attempts by players to monitor and manipulate values such as health, ammunition, and in-game currency for unfair advantages. Traditionally, developers combat such exploits by encrypting, coding, or obfuscating the location of these values, alongside implementing integrity checks to detect unauthorized modifications. However, these methods have drawbacks, as they often impact game performance and inadvertently expose variable locations to savvy attackers. Rockstar's innovation lies in masking the whereabouts of these variables, offering a more robust defense against cheating in GTA 6's online. I won't delve into the technical intricacies, but essentially, Rockstar employs a clever and seemingly straightforward technique to conceal these values. This makes it considerably tougher for attackers to pinpoint their locations. While the concept of masking values may seem straightforward, its effectiveness in bolstering stability and enhancing security for the future online segment is paramount. Moving forward, let's turn our attention to the next patent, titled System and Method for Session Management in a Multiplayer Network Gaming Environment. Filed by T2 Interactive in 2021, this patent addresses Disclosed Our Systems and Methods for Session Management. The Disclosed System allows for seamless merging and splitting of network sessions in a multiplayer network gaming environment. Seamless session management allows dynamic movement of players in a virtual world during gameplay without unnecessary loading and or stalling. As the players in the virtual world move around, the management of active game sessions can be improved to affect a more realistic perceived population. In this patent, Rockstar highlights the crucial role of online components in the success of many games, citing GTA Online as an example. They emphasize the challenges of managing network technology and resources to create a vibrant virtual world. Traditional MMO games often face limitations in session management, with some opting for single sessions that may restrict the depth of content due to increasing player counts. Others utilize multiple sessions, which can hinder feasibility, especially in peer-to-peer -peer exchanges like in GTA Online. To address these issues, Rockstar has developed a pioneering system for seamless session management. This innovative approach enables fluid splitting and merging of network sessions, allowing for a more immersive virtual world free from hardware and software constraints. Allowing players from different sessions, but in the same virtual area of the map, for example, to be merged into a single session. This allows players from previously different sessions to come across one another, thereby making the virtual world seem more populated. As an additional advantage, seamless session merging handles many network failures silently. In prior art systems, a player who loses network connectivity can be kicked out of a session and may not be able to rejoin because they are in a session by themselves. However, the Session Management System 100 allows for a disconnected player to exist in a session by themselves for a predetermined period before they are reconnected to the remaining players in the session or can be joined with another session. The method begins with monitoring a triggering event. In some embodiments, the triggering event defines when to merge two sessions or split a single session. For example, when the object, virtual players, are in the same session, move physically apart from another. The object by a predetermined virtual distance, this triggers the session management system to split the session into two different sessions. Likewise, if objects from two different sessions are within a predetermined virtual distance from one another, the session management system and merge the sessions to allow interaction between objects of the respective sessions. Other instances of monitored triggering events encompass various player and object actions, including changes in position or visibility, player entries and exits from the virtual world, and game-related activities like mission completions or tutorial beginnings. Rockstar's solution ensures seamless management of these events, preventing inconsistencies such as duplicated objects during session transitions. 
This approach accounts for factors like virtual geography, team management, networking resources, and social relationships to maintain continuity across sessions. For example, once a session is split, there can be two sessions, each with their own distinct copy of an object. Avoiding this split can avoid players that intentionally duplicate valuable objects to exploit virtual game economics. If these two sessions were to later merge, there can then be two identical objects in the same session. In this manner, the session management system advantageously avoids object duplication when two players are merged following a split. I trust that I've conveyed this information clearly. The implementation of this new system in GTA 6 promises to enhance the game's atmosphere, ensuring a more bustling world while maintaining a high level of detail throughout. Now, let's delve into what we've learned about GTA Online from the leaks of 2022. Multiplayer. In the bottom left in one of the clips, one can see there are two players in a 30-player lobby. This is because there are two slots for spectators, similar to GTA Online and Red Dead Online. There is also a reference to the script host. After that, there is a code which is either the session host or game master. Based on the information gathered, it seems probable that peer-to-peer -peer connections and 30-player lobbies will make a comeback in GTA 6 Online. However, there's a twist in how sessions will operate, allowing for seamless transitions between them. This video, we're delving into the most recent iteration of the GTA 6 mapping project. Our focus centers on a comprehensive analysis of the map's latest updates, incorporating newly unveiled areas and event coordinates derived from leaked information. Additionally, we will explore fresh insights from the initial official trailer, including the revelation of an accessible plaza. A noteworthy aspect we'll be dissecting is the potential expansiveness of the map, hinted at by newfound highway evidence in the trailer. Furthermore, we'll examine a conceptual representation illustrating the potential magnitude of the GTA 6 map. The trailer also provides a glimpse of Starfish Island, a detail we'll thoroughly cover in today's session. Let's initiate our examination by diving into the GTA 6 mapping project. For those not aware, this stands as the most extensive and refined community-driven mapping endeavor, aiming to deduce the GTA 6 map with the utmost accuracy. This endeavor leverages evidence from leaks and the primary official trailer. In our previous map analysis, we scrutinized significant alterations in the Borgorn and Grass Rivers areas, expanding the map to an impressive 18 by 8 kilometers. However, today's exploration will predominantly focus on alterations in the Vice City region. Rumors suggest that the GTA 6 map will encompass three major cities, with Vice City and Borgorn being the identified urban centers so far. Vice City, drawing inspiration from Miami, and Portglehorn, a fusion of Gulf cities in Florida. The speculated third city could possibly be modeled after Orlando or Tampa. Earlier rumors hinted at Yorktown being the third city, approximately aligning with Tampa's location. However, intriguingly, structures observed in leaked material from Portgorn were reminiscent of Panama City. Rockstar appears to amalgamate elements from distinct cities to craft a unique virtual landscape. Turning our attention specifically to Vice City, notable modifications are discernible in the Stockyard and Crossdown area. While these alterations may not be immediately apparent, a thorough comparison with the prior map iteration reveals notable changes in street layouts for improved connectivity. Building positions, including the relocation of the Jack of Hearts nightclub, featured in leaks and the trailer, signify significant shifts. Adjacent structures visible in the trailer's music video shoot scene have undergone subtle rearrangements. A noteworthy addition to the GTA 6 mapping project encompasses events gleaned from leaks, introducing a dynamic layer to our understanding of the evolving landscape. At present, we've pinpointed four events on the map, marked by light blue dots. These events include the missing persons poster at the liquor store, the big cat cage roof at Everyday Art Elephant, and the Everyday Art Sidewalk Creep, all clustered around the Crosstown SL Stockyard area. Meanwhile, there have been notable changes in the Vice River area, with some buildings rearranged and brought closer to the river. The overall shape of this area has also been altered, and a new marina building near the airport has been introduced, based on recent evidence. Another significant alteration concerns the incorporation of Ica and Belleville into Vice City. While their status remains speculative, with their names displayed in red, Ica is purportedly inspired by Alapata, a neighborhood in Miami-Dade, while Belleville draws parallels with Brownsville. Formerly perceived as small towns on the outskirts of Vice City, they're now considered part of the Vicedale neighborhoods, following fresh evidence. This reclassification potentially places scenes like the police officer pursuing the overweight individual in the Belleville neighborhood. Furthermore, a notable discovery linked to Tommy Versetti's mansion has surfaced. Star Island's inclusion in the game has been confirmed, evidenced by its appearance behind the Rockstar game's title, and in a scene featuring a bikini-clad woman. This revelation solidifies its status as a game location, with strong ties to 
the original Starfish Island from GTA Vice City, where Vercetti's estate was situated. The prospect of encountering the mansion in-game, whether as an accessible structure or an abandoned relic, remains uncertain but tantalizing. The mention of Star Island remains speculative, as indicated by its red font, leaving the possibility open for it to be renamed Starfish Island or something else. These developments encapsulate the latest updates to the GTA 6 mapping project. Additionally, let's delve into a Reddit post that has garnered attention. I'm still very intrigued by the prospect. This is a full accessible plaza. The full access plaza featured in the trailer has piqued my curiosity. This snapshot is captured during a scene where Jason and Lucia evade the police momentarily. Positioned on the right side of the frame is a sign, presumably denoting a mall within the game. Notably, several brand names, including Kowalski, Kalis, Scala, and Alpha, are visible on this sign. Furthermore, a portion of the mall's name briefly appears, starting with Ever. Could it be Evergreen Plaza or another variation? The answer remains elusive, and we'll have to await further developments to unravel this mystery. I can pretty much bet on it that this shit will indeed be fully accessible. Most of the signs on that structure look to be clothing and accessory shops, which would easily mean it's accessible to us. I'm really hoping the mall makes a return in this one and will serve kind of as a player hub when online drops. Oh, that would be good. Maybe a spot where you can't attack. Could meet people to join up for races, heists, etc. That would be pretty neat. Now let's shift our focus to some additional findings that might provide evidence for the existence of the third major city in GTA 6. Furthermore, we'll explore why the actual map size of GTA 6 could potentially surpass the estimations derived from the mapping project. Possible map length. Since we don't know what's in the northern part of the map, and we're not sure if it ends where the current mapping project suggests, I thought the map could look something like this. I get that a map like this might be three, four times bigger than GTA 5, so it could be a lot, but we can't be sure about Rockstar's plans. I also think so, because on the east coast of the current map, we have Vice City's predicted beach areas going almost to the very top. Kind of feels like the map shouldn't just end there. And if Port Gellhorn is based on Fort Myers, then maybe Tampa and Orlando could be there too. But with the current borders, there's not enough space even for a small town. Also, shaped like this, the map would resemble actual Florida more. What do you think? Now, here's something to ponder. If the map indeed resembles this depiction, it would be quite astonishing. It's intriguing how the leaks have remained silent about the northern portion of the map. I'm curious to hear your thoughts in the comments. How far north do you speculate the map extends? Do you reckon it's just slightly beyond what's revealed in the map? project? Or could there be a substantial unseen territory? Shifting gears, let's delve into a significant discovery. An observation on the size of the map using highway exits as a guide. I believe that two blink and you'll miss them shots from the trailer, combined with something I saw in the leaks, have given us a serious hint as to just how big the map for GTA V said might turn out to be, specifically north-south. The first is the shot of the man grabbing his crotch while stopped on the side of the highway. Specifically, the highway exit signs in the background. They suggest that this shot is being taken from just north of exit 14 on the highway, if turning left has you going east and turning right has you going west. What's more, the GTA VSI mapping project believes that the highway that this shot is taken from is Interstate 97. Adding to this, there's this shot from earlier in the trailer of the woman in the gold dress, hanging out the top of a convertible traveling down I-404, heading towards a junction with 1, 97. At the very start of that clip, you can catch the exit number on the sign she's driving under. You can't see all of it, but to me, it looks more like exit 18 than exit 1B. This one is more speculative though. Now, I'm about to get into the leaks, so I can't post any pictures. There's a clip in the leaks of a red ute heading northbound on 1, 97 towards the exit 13 AB junction that takes one to Washington Beach and Ekanfinaka before crashing. The mapping project has been using the leaks to create their maps, and they've placed that stretch of 1, 97 north of Mr. Crotch Grab from the trailer, running through the stockyard neighborhood. This, to me, indicates that the highway exits are going to follow a realistic number pattern, with the number increasing or decreasing for every mile traveled. The question is, where does this put exit 12? Exit 11? All the exits going up to 1? I've taken the latest version of the mapping project's map and pointed out where exits 14 and 13 are located. Then, extrapolating from there and using the map's grid as a handy guide, I drew where all the exits further down the numbering scheme might be located. I ran out of room to put exit numbers at hash 9. If 1, 97 is going to keep following the same numbering scheme all the way north until it hits exit 1, then it's likely that the map is going to be far bigger than we currently think it is, and what's been shown and plotted out so far. In fact, 
I think the only reason nothing's been plotted up there so far is because so much so far has focused on Vice City and its environs. One, 4042, could wind up running just as far north, allowing for a few extra miles and exit numbers to accommodate it crossing the Everglades grass rivers before turning north, as I-75 in real life does. Bottom line, the map for this game is going to be enormous. There's been some chatter among you all about another potential scenario. The possibility of I-97 serving as a loop highway encircling the map's perimeter, similar to GTA 5. While this is a valid consideration, I've largely dismissed it due to a straightforward reason. As previously mentioned, I-44 boasts exit numbers and highway markers that suggest its considerable length, likely extending westward until it reaches the Gulf of Mexico before veering north, mimicking the real-life trajectory of I-75. If the map's northern boundary remains close to its current cutoff point, and I-97 extends west and south extensively, then it's plausible that I-44 would mirror this pattern in the opposite direction. While the notion of two loop highways isn't entirely implausible, it could potentially introduce redundancy. Additionally, in GTA 5, the loop highway wasn't simply labeled under one name. The segment along the coast was dubbed the Great Ocean Highway, while the inland stretch traversing the desert was referred to as the Sonora Freeway. Moreover, within Los Santos, various freeways possess distinct names and numbers, even when merging seamlessly, such as the Del Perro, La Puerta, and La Mesa freeways. My hypothesis currently is that there is a loop highway, but that one, 97 and I-404, are two halves of it. They both start in Vice City and intersect in Crosstown. One, 97 runs up the Atlantic coast. One, 404 runs west through the Grass Rivers, and then turns north to run up the Gulf Coast, and they both meet at a point further north. Whether that point is a city, a smaller town, or something else that is still unknown. Feel free to drop your thoughts in the comments regarding everything covered in today's video, particularly this astonishing discovery. If you haven't been following the latest news on GTA 6 over the past year, you might be surprised by how much information has emerged. Here's a comprehensive update on everything we currently know about GTA 6. We have details about a wide array of items and tools featured in GTA 6. These include the auto dialer, binoculars, immobilizer bypass, cutoff tool, painkillers, pool cue, trauma kits, golf driver, food and drink, golf putter, USB drive, golf iron, crowbar, golf wedge, torch, jammer, duffel bag for looting, cigarettes, and a loot backpack. Let's discuss the game engine. Developers have made significant enhancements to the Euphoria physics engine, improving ragdoll physics and overall game mechanics compared to GTA 5. Now let's discuss the multiplayer aspect. In a leaked clip from GTA 6, we observed a multiplayer session with a player count. This suggests there were two players present in the lobby out of a maximum capacity of 32 slots. This mirrors the setup seen in Red Dead Online and GTA Online, where the capacity is stated as 32, but practically accommodates 30 players plus two spots reserved for spectators. While hopes for larger lobbies persist, it appears the testing phase involves 30 player lobbies. Leaks also suggest advanced weather systems, including heavy fog, a feature that was less common in GTA 5. Moving on to collectibles, there's mention of Wyman car parts. In a clip featuring Lucia, a developer is seen placing a cardboard box with a circular icon, indicating it as lootable. Debug text on this box identifies it as collectibles car parts, and Wyman car parts boxed generic used, suggesting players can collect car parts possibly tied to a character named Wyman who shares a passion for classic cars with Jason. Regarding collectible hats, there's footage of Jason in an apartment where a developer interacts with a hat labeled as an ambient collectible hat. According to debug text, this hints at the inclusion of clothing items as ambient collectibles within the game. Additionally, a comprehensive list of all brands featured in the game is provided. While some brands may be integral to the story, many are included for realism and immersion. The list is displayed on screen for viewers to pause and inspect at their leisure. Similar to Red Dead Redemption 2, the weapon wheel in GTA 6 will be divided into three sections. Weapons, equipment, and gear. Notably, players can dual wheel different weapons and access a quick item inventory displayed in the bottom left corner of the screen. While leaked recreations of the weapon wheels provide a glimpse, it's expected that the final version may evolve during the game's development. In a video snippet, an NPC is observed shooting at Jason, triggering a health tip to appear on the left side of the screen when Jason's health decreases. Additionally, the game will feature lighting and skybox systems, similar to those in Red Dead Redemption 2, promising improvements such as volumetric clouds and better lighting effects. 
Speaking of criminal activities, noteworthy events include the Hanks Waffles heist, where Jason and Lucia pull off a daring robbery. Other clips suggest Jason possesses an ability to perceive through walls. Additionally, there are events focused on searching vehicle trunks, which may yield valuable items or nothing at all. Lastly, delivery and pickup warehouse events are mentioned for Port Gelhorn, though specific details are still unclear. When it comes to accessible buildings, GTA 6 offers a wide range, including the Malibu Club, a pawn shop, Jack of Hearts Club, supermarkets, bars, restaurants, apartments, and laundromats, all enriching the immersive experience. Players will also have the ability to command the other character during a robbery. In leaked footage, a prompt advises players to either check in with Jason or hold for more options, indicating the potential to issue commands to your partner during a heist. This feature aims to streamline gameplay, enabling effective control of both characters simultaneously. Unlocking doors and gates is also demonstrated, as shown in a video featuring Jason in the San For San area. Debug text indicates locked door panels, suggesting the necessity to unlock specific entry points. In addition, a new police system called Time Until Cops Dispatch has been implemented. Now, when you commit a crime, the police won't immediately arrive. Instead, you'll have a brief window to evade capture before law enforcement begins to converge on your location. Security cameras play a role in surveillance, but their function differs from GTA Online. Instead of instant detection, there's a detection meter similar to games like Payday 2 or 3. As the meter fills up, you must break line of sight within a certain time frame to avoid detection. Players also have the ability to restrain NPCs using zip ties, as seen in leaked footage. This feature enhances the realism of robberies, offering greater control over the situation. Additionally, players can loot vehicles, as briefly shown in the Hank's Waffles video. A button prompt to examine SUV suggests the ability to inspect random vehicles and potentially steal valuables from them. A while back, a significant leak revealed a plethora of potential world encounters, random events that occur as you navigate the game world. I've displayed these on your screen, and while I won't go through each one, you'll notice they're quite fascinating. From parking disputes to donut burnouts, protests, and even someone getting a concussion, these events add depth and realism to the world of Vice City. It's exciting to imagine strolling through such a dynamic environment where something is always happening. Take a moment to review them if you like, they're quite impressive. Moving forward, the community has endeavored to construct a map of GTA 6 based on coordinates and locations gleaned from leaks. This preliminary map outlines Vice City situated at the bottom right. The top section of the map remains somewhat enigmatic for now. Nonetheless, this initial map looks incredibly promising, and the excitement for exploring its intricacies is palpable. For the setting, we know about three different gangs in Vice City. San For San, a Haitian gang, the Guardia Brothers, and the far-right militia. These details create an exciting anticipation for what to expect in GTA 6. Now, let's delve into the variety of confirmed wildlife in the game. Players can expect encounters with snakes, seagulls, skunks, raccoons, alligators, wading birds, squirrels, southern leopard frogs, crayfish, lizards, skunk apes, pigeons, opossums, and even whales. While these are the animals confirmed so far, we anticipate discovering more upon the game's release. These are the species we're aware of at present. Fences in GTA 6 are not just physical barriers to jump over or drive through. They are individuals involved in illegal transactions within the game. Acting as middlemen, these characters buy illegal items from players to resell them to others. Now, let's explore the AI witness system and police recognition feature, which are notably significant. In the Hank's Waffles robbery video, beneath the wanted level stars, there's a mention of full description, suggesting that witnesses can provide detailed information about you. This implies that once identified, the police will recognize you. When Lucia enters a police vehicle, there's initially no vehicle description, but this quickly changes to a full vehicle description. This indicates that law enforcement will possess detailed information about your vehicle. Moreover, the text warns that any vehicle seen entering will be noted by the authorities. This suggests that even after losing a wanted level, if spotted again in the same vehicle, the police will pursue and apprehend you. During the robbery scene, Jason attempts to prevent customers with yellow icons above their heads from calling the cops or fleeing. Additionally, a female NPC inside the diner exhibits similar behavior, with her icon flickering as Lucia leaves, turning red when surrounded by cops, and then fleeing upon spotting Lucia. 
These advanced NPC systems indicate a more sophisticated interaction model. Regarding item sharing, Jason and Lucia appear to be able to share items between them. For instance, in one clip, Jason steals items from containers, keeping some for himself while sharing others. Regarding sound design, it's no surprise that GTA 6 will feature more realistic soundscapes. Weapon sounds are crisper and more authentic, with increased volume for a more immersive experience. The impact of bodies hitting the floor will have a deeper thud, creating a more visceral effect. Police sirens will reverberate off buildings and environmental elements more realistically, while the sound of items will vary depending on the surroundings. For instance, if you're in a shipping container, sounds will echo more, adding depth to the auditory experience. Overall, these sound enhancements aim to emulate real-life scenarios more accurately, contributing to the game's realism. Moving on, we have an extensive list of every confirmed vehicle slated to appear in GTA 6, sourced from both the game files and leaks. I covered these in detail in a previous video, so I won't repeat them here. However, I've provided them on your screen for your reference. If you're interested in exploring the full list yourself, you can find them on page 30 of the document. The game features improved vehicle damage and handling, as seen in clips where crashes result in realistic effects, like splitting front fenders and bending car hoods. Furthermore, car interiors now include a functional GPS and waypoint system, enhancing immersion, especially in first-person driving. Players also have the option to enter a car from the passenger seat, adding a touch of realism to gameplay. These details highlight GTA 6's commitment to intricate design elements, evident in its meticulous attention to detail throughout the game. In addition, several new gameplay mechanics have been revealed. Players will now have the ability to walk while in cover, a long-awaited feature that introduces prone movement for the first time in GTA gameplay. Loot bags will allow for storing additional items, and players can now drop and pick up weapons. A new, under-fire animation has been introduced where characters cover their faces during combat, and players can opt to self-revive after sustaining heavy damage. Other significant mechanics include the ability to switch shoulders while aiming down sights, grappling during hand-to-hand -hand combat, and the introduction of buddy communications and a buddy ping system. This system, likely shared between protagonists Jason and Lucia, remains intriguing, with its full functionality yet to be revealed. Additionally, a new cover mode has been introduced, altering the way shooting from car windows is executed. Characters will now fully lean out of windows, enabling full 360-degree shooting. Furthermore, a new ability system has been introduced, potentially exclusive to Jason, allowing for a form of wall perception. Whether Lucia will possess this ability remains uncertain. Players can also interact with a greater variety of objects and NPCs, engaging in actions such as carrying bodies, committing robberies, issuing threats, and conversing during criminal activities. Moreover, the ability to pick up additional items, such as beer bottles and cans, enhances the overall gameplay experience. Let's explore some of the exciting new gameplay systems. Firstly, there's the introduction of money laundering, hinted at during the Hank's Waffles robbery. An icon found near the car wash property featured a washing machine with a dollar sign, suggesting potential opportunities for money laundering. This implies that players may be able to purchase properties with the intent of laundering money, although specific details on mechanics remain undisclosed. Nevertheless, it appears players will once again have the option to acquire certain types of businesses for illicit activities. Additionally, there's a confirmed lineup of weapons, which includes a rocket launcher, assault rifle, baseball bat, polymer pistol, knife, bolt-action sniper rifle, Molotov cocktail, spear gun, which is intriguing, smoke grenade, compact SMG, flashbang, micro SMG, sniper rifle, heavy machine gun, auto rifle, and pump-action shotgun. Moreover, glimpses of Jason in various states, sporting different hair lengths and facial hairstyles, suggest a hair growth system akin to Red Dead Redemption 2. This feature seems highly likely given the game's lineage. In terms of sustenance, players can consume items directly from their inventory. In a scene at a gas station, Jason adds wine, soda, and fruit to his inventory, highlighting the ability to eat and drink on the go, akin to mechanics seen in Red Dead and GTA Online. In GTA 6, you can expect to encounter raccoons rummaging through trash cans and stealing food bags. This is evidenced in the game files, which document three world events. Raccoon climbing out of garbage, raccoon rummaging through trash, and raccoon stealing food. While there are numerous intricate details to explore, 
We've uncovered a multitude of confirmed locations spread across Vice City and its surrounding areas. Naturally, Vice City serves as the central hub, encompassing neighborhoods such as Edgewater, North by City, Rock Ridge, Little Haiti, Vice Beach, South Beach, Washington Beach, and Key Biscayne. Additionally, there's Port Gellhorn, which appears to be a distinct city akin to Sandy Shores or Polito Bay from previous games. Other notable spots include Yorktown, Ambrosia, Sundown, The Keys, La Pearl, Red Hill, Lake Leonida, Hamlet, Stockyard, Homestead, Grass Rivers, Iken Faka, various underwater locations, and more. Each of these locales is meticulously detailed, with numerous mini locations nestled within them. It's remarkable how much information we already have about the game's expansive geography. In GTA 6, if your character sustains injuries, health will regenerate slowly over time. To expedite recovery, you can access the weapon wheel and utilize a healing item. Unlike GTA 5, where health only regenerates up to 50% naturally and requires snacks for full recovery, GTA 6 appears to allow for natural regeneration to full health, albeit at a slower rate. While not officially confirmed, it's implied that using a medical item will accelerate this healing process. Regarding open world activities, there are seven confirmed activities thus far. Dice, golf, fishing, races, adventuring, shipments, and delivery van events. A video showcases a delivery van event near the industrial area of Port Gellhorn, featuring active security cameras that add complexity to potential heists. Two distinct event types mentioned in the events list are Pragmatic Cool and Chaotic Romantic. Introducing a new event type called Cop Trap, strategically placed in various locations across the map. The confirmed locations are displayed on your screen, indicating that law enforcement will deploy different tactics to apprehend you. Next, let's explore the array of new features spanning two full pages. Firstly, an enhanced AI system is showcased in a video where enemy AI targets Lucia once she turns around. These adversaries demonstrate improved decision-making, adapting their shooting tactics dynamically based on the situation. Notably, they adjust their positioning relative to nearby objects, aiming to avoid frustrating head-glitching tactics. Additionally, they display more tactical behaviors, such as lowering their profile during reloads and employing lateral strafing while firing. NPC behavior has also undergone enhancements, with AI groups no longer wandering individually, but moving in clusters, reminiscent of the dynamics seen in Red Dead Redemption 2. This is evident in a video where Lucia encounters a group of tourists engaged in conversation as they pass by. This enriches pedestrian interactions beyond the independent roaming seen in GTA 5, now featuring diverse groups and even couples strolling together, enhancing the game's realism. A new gameplay feature allows players to surrender to the police during a robbery, introducing an intriguing dynamic with consequences yet to be fully revealed. Additionally, players can purchase gumballs from vending machines, potentially serving as a health boost, although specific effects remain speculative. Similar to GTA 5, your character's attire will accumulate dirt over time, adding a layer of realism. Hacking will also be a significant element, with Lucia seen carrying various hacking tools, though it's unclear if Jason will have access to these tools as well. Previous leaks suggested Lucia's role as the designated hacker, but further details will emerge in due course. Expect an enhanced car hijacking system in GTA 6. For example, the inclusion of an immobilizer bypass suggests that stealing luxury cars will be more challenging. Additionally, a tool called a Slim Jim will be used to unlock older vehicles, adding complexity to car theft. Moreover, events such as Steel Car in Progress and Steel Car Fail indicate potential complications during vehicle theft. Events like Carjacking Dash Cat and Carjacking Dash Advanced AI suggest further intricacies in vehicle-related activities. Finally, the document concludes with approximately 20 pages detailing locations found in leaks that correspond to real-world locales in Miami. This inclusion underscores the meticulous efforts put into crafting a rich and immersive game world. Hey there, in this video, we're diving into an upcoming terrain system in GTA 6, brought to you by Rockstar Games. Additionally, we'll explore some cool graphics enhancements like ambient occlusion, global illumination, and material tinting slated for the next GTA. The scoop comes straight from an official patent filed by Take-Two Interactive Rockstar's parent company. So let's kick things off by checking out the patent titled Method and Apparatus for Enhanced Graphics Rendering in a Video Game Environment. According to Rockstar, 
Rockstar games. The rendering of real-time graphics usually happens in a pipeline setup like this one. At the core of it, the process kicks off by handling 3D vertex information, moving on to render pixel-level details like light color and shadows. In the current systems, one or more shaders are employed for this pixel-level rendering. These shaders are essentially programs that operate on the GPU. The challenge in rendering lies in finding the right balance between realism and detail, while ensuring smooth performance, aiming for that higher frame rate. For example, a virtual world should illustrate various terrains that mirror a number of lifelike geographical areas. Each of these terrains can provide unique interactions with a virtual character in the video game. By way of example, a virtual player traveling through sand or snow should leave footprints that are different than the virtual player walking down a concrete sidewalk. However, because of the number of various terrains that need be accounted for, and the unique behavior of each terrain, conventional graphic systems do not have enough processing power to account for dynamic terrain and the associated interaction with players of the game. So, Rockstar Games developed a shader system for efficiently rendering various types of terrain with high realism. Let's take a peek at the system. The world level map, visible in the bottom right, outlines all the different dynamic terrains, such as muddy, sandy, grassy, hard ground, snowy, and more. Take a gander at this world level map showcasing the diverse terrains. Now, let's explore the various dynamic terrain zones within the game world. Using Red Dead Redemption 2 as an illustration, this world level map plays a pivotal role in determining the terrain that players or NPCs interact with. Essentially, it acts as the foundation to generate a trail map. Think of a trail map as a record of all the imprints left behind by characters, vehicles, and other objects, like the aftermath of explosions. Take this image, for instance, showcasing how the snow has been altered by the actions of this NPC. Different shaders of the shader system are used for different terrain types and with different trail map types. For example, basic terrains do not require special shaders, while shallow mud terrains can advantageously benefit from a parallax surface shader to efficiently show ruts and tracks in the terrain with a high-detail trail map. As an additional example, deep mud terrain may use a tessellation surface shader to model the ruts and tracks in the mud. You might be aware that in Red Dead Redemption 2, you can leave realistic footprints in the snow and mud. Rockstar explained that they employ two shaders for this effect parallax maps, and desolation. These shaders create a convincing illusion of high-level deformation, where footprints appear on the terrain surface. In reality, the surface is warped, but not physically deformed, ensuring a smooth and polished movement experience. In GTA 6, they're applying the same technique to bring an extra layer of realism. This will be particularly noticeable with explosions, firing RPGs at the ground, walking through mud, or driving vehicles through it, each leaving distinct tracks based on the terrain. RPGs, for instance, will create crates on the ground. This adds a significant level of interactivity, making it feel like you're genuinely impacting the game world in real time. Despite it being an illusion, the result will be remarkably realistic, akin to the snow in Red Dead Redemption 2. To sum it up, this graphics rendering patent encompasses the dynamic terrain, ambient occlusion, global illumination, and material tinting, all exciting new features making their way to GTA 6. Rockstar has invented and patented new graphics rendering systems, which aims to fix some of the problems of traditional graphics rendering systems to make graphics rendering more efficient, thus improving performance and allowing for better, more realistic, and more immersive visuals. Dynamic Terrain System This is a system that records and creates trail maps which make it possible that terrains can be visually deformed when being interacted with in various ways. Players, NPCs, vehicles, objects, and explosions can affect the terrain. For example, leaving footprints or vehicle tracks in sand can be seen in action in Trailer 1. Explosions will leave craters in the terrain as well. It's also possible for certain changes to the terrain to disappear over time. For example, footprints and tracks in mud disappearing after some time since the viscosity of mud makes it return to its normal state after some time. There are different types of terrains, for example, muddy, sandy, hard ground, grassy or snowy terrain. Each type of terrain differently. A sandy terrain will be more easily deformed than a grassy terrain, for example. In the initial part of our video, we delved into the rendering pipeline, which also incorporates a lighting stage. While conventional systems often utilize cube maps for pre-rendering lighting, it's worth noting that this is mainly for static elements. When it comes to dynamic characters, pre-computed lighting falls short in accommodating changes from objects within the scene. Although ambient occlusion can be pre-baked, it lacks the capability to update dynamically. Realism takes a hit due to this. Conventional systems often incorporate static lights to mimic reflected light, like sunlight bouncing off the ground and under a table. However, this static approach fails to update with changes in the light source. 
To address these challenges, Rockstar has patented new systems. Ambient Occlusion This is a graphics technique that can be utilized in multiple forms to determine how light and shading are displayed on an object. It can lead to darkened areas, enhanced contrast, and improved surfaces due to this technology. This patent's Ambient Occlusion system offers some special advantages. Determined by either preset or randomized assets based on developer discretion, the lighting can greatly provide a new vision to world building to make certain areas stand out, akin to a real-life setting. Global Illumination Global Illumination is a graphics rendering technique that models how light is bounced off of surfaces onto other surfaces in direct light. Rather than being limited to just the light that hits a surface directly from a light source, direct light. Rockstar system detailed in this patent uses a bounce map that is projected in a top-down fashion to determine reflected light off of the ground. This bounce map is then converted into a texture that provides an approximation for the expected bounce back of light. This simulates the effect that would be achieved rendering the multiple passes of lighting to account for the natural bounce reflections. The bounce map can then be integrated into the lighting pipeline. During this, a technique is used to determine the area that needs this extra pass for each frame. This way, only the visible and required area is rendered with this technique thus making it very efficient and less performance intensive. Overall, this provides many of the benefits of ray tracing without the computational expense. Ray traced global illumination will probably still be in the game. For example, Lucia prison clip in trailer one. This special system is just a way to render large scale global illumination efficiently. Now, let's touch on the final problem that Rockstar has addressed through this patent with conventional systems. Finally, as another example, to develop a rich and engaging game world, it is advantageous to populate the world with variations of similar objects. In other words, you do not want every simulated person, cow, gun, car, cart, ship, or animal generated in the game to look the same. Because the 3D model for many of these objects would be identical, variation was traditionally accomplished by creating different texture files to paint a different look on the object. For example, two variants of a cow model could be created, one with a texture to create a brown cow, and the other with a texture to create a black cow. These prior art systems created the desired variety at the cost of artist time, computer memory, and resources to maintain a multitude of different hand-authored variants for each in-game object. To combat this, Rockstar is introducing material tinting. RDR2 had a system that could tint the color of clothes to create far more variations on NPCs. This new patent is an evolution of that system and allows for creating of several in-game object variants from a single model. It can not only modify an object's colors, but other material properties, such as metalness and lighting parameters, or add additional layers to it, such as mud, snow, or dust as well. Envision the extent of customization that awaits in this game. Summing up the official patent for graphics rendering, it's evident that Rockstar has elevated numerous systems from Red Dead Redemption 2. Share your thoughts on everything covered in today's video in the comments below.